Bob Ethier is an EMT and the health officer for the town of Wareham, Massachusetts. Well acquainted with the streets and roads, he's often the first responder to neighbors in distress. But about 20 years ago, a diagnosis of type 1 diabetes put his life on a path full of insulin shots, pumps, and frustration. You know, I can test my sugar and be 130 and be all excited and be 400 in two hours and it's just frustrating and you're trying to do it. Every day you get up and you tell yourself, I'm going to have normal blood sugars today and you try so hard and then psychologically it wears on you when you're testing it. You know you're doing all the right things and it's just not working. There was also constant worry. Worry about whether this public safety advocate could safely do the things he loved in life. I'm a big hunter, avid hunter and fisherman, and I'd be in the woods and a long way away from wherever and uh, become low. I've done it with my kids when I've taken them fishing and have to run to the car. Bob was determined not to allow his diabetes to whittle away time for the things he loved, so he confided in his physician. And I said, you know something, doctor, I just, I've had enough of this. I just don't want to experience this anymore. And she said, well, Bob, there's not much you can do, but right next door at Beth Israel Deaconess, they're doing pancreas transplants right now. Right now wasn't soon enough for Bob, but first there was the matter of determining if he was indeed a candidate. Dr. Seth Karp heads the pancreas program at the Transplant Institute at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, the largest such program in New England. We know that pancreas transplantation is a cure for diabetes. It's not a cure that is applicable to everyone, but for the people that it is applicable to, it can cure their diabetes. Candidates for transplant may include those with severe symptoms of their type 1 diabetes, in particular, those who have difficulty controlling their blood sugars or who tend to pass out when their blood sugars dive low. Also, patients with major complications of diabetes, including issues with vision loss, severe loss of sensation to the feet causing ulcers or problems walking, or significant trouble digesting food. Bob was placed on the organ transplant list where he would wait for two and a half years. He had given careful consideration to the risks that come with any major surgery, bleeding, infection, post-op recovery, and the chance that the donor pancreas might not function or be rejected, which happens in 10 to 15 percent of all cases. Success, however, would mean no more insulin shots, no more diabetes. It's a very well-recognized procedure. So of all the operations that I do and, and all the operations I've been involved with, patients with successful pancreas transplant are probably the happiest patients that I, I ever take care of. Many patients with diabetes are worried about losing their eyesight, losing the feeling in their legs, having problems eating. And those problems with a functioning pancreas will not, will not occur. And so it's not only, it's a life, tremendous lifestyle benefit, but it's also a great peace of mind that the patients have that they don't have to worry about their diabetes anymore. Bob got his transplant in December of 2008. Shortly after discharge, he was readmitted with a high fever. It meant spending Christmas in the hospital, but today he considers his new pancreas a priceless gift, gladly accepting the anti-rejection medication in exchange for a cure. In the beginning, it was very difficult taking the medication and fighting with the nausea, but my body adapted adapt pretty well. I've been fortunate. I always tell people I'm blessed and highly favored because uh, I have had no real issues with the pancreas transplant. And since my recovery, I feel good every day.